Hey, welcome to the Upland Nation podcast. I'm Scott Linden, your host. Glad you could be with me and with everybody else because there's a long line of callers just waiting to put their two cents worth in on the topic of the day, which is, uh, well, appropriate for today, Thanksgiving. We're going to talk all about gratitude and uh, being thankful. I'm going to limit it to the sphere of bird hunting and bird dogs, but uh, you can uh, mentally cover all the other bases in your own mind should be a lot of fun we'll take your calls like i said i'll share a few thoughts as well of my own and some scientifically proven reasons why we should be more grateful it may actually make you a better hunter and dog owner yeah it's all coming up is including a public access tip uh, just checked it out myself some hunting strategy and dog handling advice and uh, who knows what will happen when your calls start coming in that's all coming up right here on the upland nation podcast right after this very brief commercial message from our friends fred bohm and family at sage and breaker.com sage and breaker mercantile is the name of the company and this is an event cyber monday only so Glad you could get in under the wire, Fred. Buy 200 bucks or more worth of their great heirloom quality dog, dog, gun cleaning and gun care products, and you'll get some free stuff, some firearm cleaning swabs, a tube of firearm pipe cleaners. All that stuff is free when you spend a couple hundred bucks. They got another level at $100. So if you're looking for gifts for yourself or anybody else, go to sageandbreaker.com on Cyber Monday and uh, get a very rare opportunity at an added value offer from them. All right, so last podcast, we talked about what some people will call hot spotting. Others will call being generous. I don't know where you fall on which side of the line. And what I learned and, and of course, blogged about soon thereafter was the line is blurry. And while just about everybody says, oh, I'm never going to give up my secret spots, most people, if you ask enough questions in the right way, will admit that, number one, they were the beneficiary of somebody else helping them by helping them find a spot. And with qualification, they are doing it too. Jim at Richter Construction dropped me a note on the blog the day after the podcast started. I think it sums up a lot of what a lot of us feel. Scott, I help struggling people often. A good hunter can always find birds. It takes a lot to be successful. Time, money, health, dogs, fitness, and skills. Few have all of that. And I might add, Jim, you're absolutely right, especially when we get, first get started. Jim says, it's gratifying to help. I do this for selfish reasons. I enjoy helping people with finding a good addiction and passion. Well, good on you, Jim. You've summed it up better than me or most of the callers, although they did a great job, and I sure enjoyed it. And we're, yeah sitting right now on a bunch of phone calls on hold. We'll be getting to those in just a moment. I do want to share one other thing with you. Some of you know that my goal in life is never to drink the same craft beer twice. Ditto for Scotch whiskeys. And I just found a new one. If you're looking for one and you like the style that comes from the island, they call it Isla over there. It's spelled I-S-L-A-Y. There was, there's about eight or 10 distilleries over there. Ardbeg is where I got there. Ardbeg Oogadal. Yeah, that's what it's called. It's spelled U-I-G-E-A-D-A-I-L. Oogadal. You're looking for a great Isla-style Scotch whiskey. Take my word for it. It is luscious. Okay, just about ready to talk about our subject of the day, Thanksgiving and gratitude. First, a quick reminder if you're looking for hearing protection, remember you can only lose your hearing once and then after that it's permanent. Go to ESPAmerica.com and learn more about how all that works and then learn about all their options for you to preserve it. It's all at ESPAmerica.com. So here we are, Thanksgiving. 
or getting ready for Thanksgiving, depending on when you're listening to this, or suffering from the after effects of Thanksgiving. I'll leave that up to you. I've got my own challenges in that world. And uh, on this day, Thanksgiving, I generally indulge all of my um, all of my vices. Let's just leave it at that. But I am going hunting the day after and the day after and the day after that, too. So maybe I'll actually work some of those calories off. So who can argue with giving thanks all year round? This time of year is when it comes to the four. But if you need motivation, consider gratitude has direct and personal benefits. I did the research. I'm always looking for things like this, trying to keep that glass half full and heading towards the top and brimming over. Some of the benefits, better physical and psychological health. Can't we all use that? Reduced aggression. Well, if you have a wire hair, any help you can get in that regard is probably valuable. And higher quality sleep. Oh boy, I sure hope it's true. I'm working hard at that one. Unfortunately, I have yet to find any data suggesting it will help my shooting, but I'm not done with my research yet. So I'll kick it off and then we'll go to the phones. We got one, two, three, at least six people in line on the phones for this one and maybe more. We'll see. I'm grateful for the surprisingly strong bird populations I've seen so far in every place from Oregon and Nevada to Kansas and South Dakota. One of the really interesting, well, I don't know what to call it, mysteries, su pleasant surprises, has been the number of Hungarian partridge I've been finding in places that rattlesnakes are usually the primary um, residents. I don't figure it out yet, but I'll be, I'll be talking to some of the biologists about why rattlesnakes and uh, chuckers get together, but Huns are now in the same areas. Uh, let me know if you're thinking the same thing. Maybe you've had some experience. Also grateful for Flick. At two years old, he's, he's doing pretty well, and, and especially considering who his trainer is. So I am grateful for birds and bird dogs, and I bet so are you. Speaking of which, Mike Gandolfo on the Facebook page uh, says, among other things, uh, when I was uh, uh, talking to folks about this topic, I, I put up a, a picture of Flick on going home day from the kennel. Uh, he's a three devils uh, wire hair, by the way. Uh, so at eight weeks old, he was just a little handful, literally, and that's what we did. We held him up against a, a uh, a metal cutout of his father against the wall and it looks great and I'll, I'll try and leave it on the website or on the on the Facebook page for a while thanks Mike he loved it great looking puppy I can't agree more all right first up let's go to the phones with a friend of mine that uh, probably is the right way to start this discussion off yeah Tom Fiumarella joins us again tom has been uh, well the subject of a podcast uh, tom you're a you're a shooting instructor hunting guide uh, all around great guy uh, very popular with our podcast listeners by the way and uh, also frankly one of the most motivating guys i know so tell me in this day and age how does a guy like you cope with gratitude and being thankful around this time of year or the whole year well, very honestly, the best thing is is where we live. There's nothing, there's nothing better than being in the United States of America. And I know there's issues, and I know there's problems, and I know there's a whole bunch of things. But without being where we are and the people who gave us the ability to be where we are, so we're not speaking, you know, a foreign language, um, that's the best thing that we can be thankful for. And I wouldn't rather be any place than where I am today. And uh, that's one thing that uh, I appreciate tremendously and and really get upset when I don't see people appreciating where they live because um, this is the best place on earth. You know, it seems like the pursuit of happiness is um, is always under attack. And that, uh, you know, that, that, that definition changes for everybody. But one of the things that I think it includes is, 
owning dogs and owning guns and being able to hunt in so many places, even if you are not the actual property owner, you can go to all the public ground available, so many other kinds of programs out there. In the in the bird hunting sphere, uh, I know you've got a long list, but can you narrow it down to just a few things that you're grateful for? Well, I'm grateful for my dogs. Um, very honestly, um, I couldn't live without them. I don't know how anybody can live without a without a canine in their life, whether it be an Airedale or a Brittany. Um, and that's one thing that I that I look at every single day and say. My God, I'm I'm glad you're part of the things I do because uh, it's something extremely, extremely special to me. Um, they're parts of the family. Um, they're like my kids, and um, they're they're something that I'm thankful for almost almost on a daily basis. Well, so am I. So much so that I wrote a book about it. You could probably do a better book, but uh, uh, in that whole realm of dogs and uh, and what they do for us. Um, Tell me a little bit about what you think they're doing for you and maybe for other people. We just need to wake up to it. Well, my dogs over the years have taught me to be a better person. And I don't say that lightly. I say that from the heart and I say that very honestly. Um, these dogs and, and the way they act and the way they interact with you, they never have bad days. They're always happy to see you. They have a work ethic that no human could ever duplicate. And, and 90% of them do it for you. They don't do it just because they want to do it. They want to do it for you to please you and to give you something that, that they can give you. And, and anybody that, that doesn't understand that is either never owned a canine or has not, um, has not interacted with a canine on a, on a very high level, whether it be, you know, a dog that you own as a, a pet for a long time, or whether it's a, uh, a police dog that you you train or a bird dog that you work with or a pet that you have at home and and they've taught me to be a better person and you know we say all the time you know i hope i can live up to the person my dog thinks i am yeah um but I, but i gotta tell you i mean they have they have given me a new look on the way i should be treating other people and uh over the years um, I think it's, it's been a tremendous, tremendous thing for me. And, um, it, it's changed me. It really, really has. You're absolutely right. If we could only live up to our dog's expectations all the time, how about your hunting season? How's it going so far? Well, it's going spectacular. I mean, we got some time to put the dogs over some grouse in Maine. Uh, we've been up, we were up there and did, uh, did very well. Um, the guiding season has been nothing short of spectacular. Um, over the Chris, over the excuse me, Christmas, over the Thanksgiving holiday, um, I start out on Thursday. I end up on Monday afternoon, and I think I've got nine hunts within that span. Um, so <laughs> these dogs are going to be extremely busy, and they're going to have uh, one tired owner at the end. They'll but, be um, they'll be a little tired too, but uh, everybody, including Tom, will probably be ready to go again on Tuesday. Yep, that that's for sure. That's <laughs> for sure. But you know what? Um, they're bred for it. They're made for it. They're athletes in in the in the you know most unbelievable terms. Every time I go to the vet, my vet looks at me and says, "God, I love these dogs coming in. These dogs are athletes." And they are. They're just uh, unbelievable. On our three days in Maine with the GPS collar, they did 87 miles. Wow. Yeah. That's three days in Maine, 87 miles on these dogs. And the next day they would wake up looking at me going, let's do it some more. That's what we love about him. You're absolutely right. Okay, so among other things, Tom is thankful for his great dogs and the chance to share the field with them. Tom, I can't think of a better way to wish you a happy Thanksgiving than to hope that you have a great time out there today. Thanks a lot for being on the podcast. No problem, Scott. And you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. If I don't talk to you, you have a wonderful Christmas and holiday, too. Thank you very much. Kind of hard to top that. Maybe I should have saved him for last, but Tom's the kind of guy who uh, you just want to talk to. And if you get the chance and he's on the list, you want to put him at the top of the list. 
Okay. Uh, hey, you know, here's one of the things I learned recently doing some research for this, uh, this special podcast on Thanksgiving. According to Amy Morin in Psychology Today, uh, gratitude improves psychological health. It reduces a multitude of toxic emotions from envy and resentment to frustration and regret. So you know that guy who got your hunting spot before you did that day? Or what about the guy who shoots better than you? Uh, just be a little bit more grateful for something else, and uh, maybe that will all just go away, at least temporarily. Nice note on on Facebook from my friend George Cummins. George, we will hunt together sometime soon. I hope that's this season. If not, it'll be next season. I'll see you in Mitchell, South Dakota again. George posted a, a photo of his Weimaraner Samson, who I've had the pleasure of meeting several times, and Samson's predecessors as well. George says, I'm thankful for this amazing boy. And if you knew the backstory, you'd understand exactly what George is talking about. Joining me on the phone right now, Reese Chambers. Reese, you left a note and you said, Dixieland guides and bird dogs and wing shooters rest. Is that how you go for it now? Is that when that what you go by? Well, you know, that's two businesses that I have. I, I live in Georgia full time, and then I have a, a house out in Kansas, in Lorraine, Kansas, that I operate Wing Shooters Rest from, and I rent rooms to bird hunters so that they can come out and enjoy the public hunting there in Kansas. Yes, now I'm. It's all coming back to me now, and thank you for the invitation, by the way. Sure. Uh, uh, and I only wish I could have taken advantage of it when I was out there last week. Tell me how how was your visit to Kansas? How did you do out there? Well, you know, we saw all three species, uh, but the, the pheasants were really hard to come by. And speaking with the farmers, you know, they said that they uh, didn't see very many birds when they were. Uh, combine in the fields this year but they they saw a lot of quail mm -hmm. but just not a lot of pheasants and then we also um you know came across some prairie chickens as well so so we had it you know we had a good good trip but uh you know eight to ten miles a day and, and it's it's hard work that's precisely how we did it uh we were making shows on walk-in hunting areas over there and uh yeah, we saw more quail than we saw pheasants by a long shot. We saw enough pheasants to keep us interested, and uh, the quail population was surprisingly upbeat, so I loved that. The only prairie chicken I saw was as I was driving away from our last stop, but that was kind of a pleasant surprise because they are coming back into that county, which they, they really haven't had a lot of them there. Do you get a chance to shoot any of those when you're out there? You know, this was the first year that I'd actually encountered very many, and I've been going out to this same place for about 12 years now. Um, so we we uh, we were able to pass shoot a few, and uh, actually got a covey up off the ground. So it was it was exciting on the bridge. I killed my first prairie chicken this year. Well, that might be something to be thankful for, and that's the theme, of course, today. Our first annual Thanksgiving Upland Nation podcast, among other things. Uh, tell me. Yeah, within the realm of um, uh, of bird hunting and bird dogs, what are you thankful for these days? Well, I'm thankful for the ability to, to have places to, that the public can go and hunt, um, like in Kansas uh, with the Weehaw properties and the state properties, and there are a lot of them there. And in other states as well that, that, um, that seem to do a great job with their resources. And for a person like me that, that doesn't have a lot of private contacts that can go out and, and hunt a, a piece of private property the ability to, to hunt on a public piece of ground is 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 everything to me it, it's what allows me to pursue uh, bird hunting across the country you know uh, last week's podcast was on that topic to a great degree finding places to hunt is the number one problem that people have and that's what they cite when they quit hunting is they can't find these places i think it's it's more a perception than anything else and uh, and you're a perfect example of that once you get clued into it there's a whole bunch of places to to look for that information isn't there well, there is, and, and you know, I mean, I talk about Kansas just simply because I, I have the house there and, and are and more familiar with that area than anything, but, you know, you've got uh, the Weehaw maps that you can download onto your Garmin. Uh, you know, everything is uh, fairly high-tech today. Uh, Kansas is full of lake systems, and on basically each of those lake systems, there's going to be anywhere from 
four or five six thousand acres of huntable property so you know if, if you if you don't mind doing a little homework and and parking in a parking area or just parking on the side of the road that's a the good thing about kansas if you see that we haul sign you can pull right off on the side of the road and and cross that fence in a comfortable manner and, and go hunt. And you don't even need to sign in or ask permission. I'll tell you, that's the nicest thing about Kansas, that you compare that to some other states, including my home state of Oregon, where quite often you still have to try and find the landowner, even if their land is part of one of those programs. So I'm thankful for that. And thanks for the reminder, Reese. How about your dogs? Uh, how are they doing this year? Oh, they're just fantastic. I, I'm a German short-haired pointer man. Uh, I have seven dogs, and I've uh, got two puppies on the way with a, a breeding for my stud dog traveler. So, uh, you know, I'm uh, as we would say down south, I am eat up with it. Uh, <laughs> You're in tall cotton? <laughs> I am. I, I am definitely in, in, in tall cotton. So, you know, it's uh, I'm, I'm just thankful for, for the ability to do these things still, and in uh, in this great country that we have um you know things are, have changed a lot in the years but you know there are still birds to be had and great bird dogs to be walked behind and fantastic shotguns to oil after the hunt and and i'm i'm proud to still be doing that amen to that i wish you the best i hope the rest of your season goes well and maybe next year i'll make a stop at wing shooters rest near lorraine thanks for being on the program Appreciate it, Reese. Have a great holiday season. Scott, thank you so much. Y'all have a great day. And I'm thankful for accents like that as well because I love talking with folks from all over the world and uh, learning how they enjoy themselves outdoors, whether it's behind a flusher or retriever, a pointer, or all of the above, which we did the last time we were in Kansas, by the way. Matt Shively posted on our Facebook page, he is thankful for guys like... Listen carefully, Chad Hunt, Tony Petrea, Mike Kieran, and Joe Gould for their sound advice. Matt also is especially grateful to his dad, Baron Shively, for taking him on hunts at an age when it was really more of an inconvenience than anything else. Amen to that. You're a lucky man, Matt. And uh, Baron, I hope you got something out of it as well. Matt says, it's a privilege to recall the earliest mysteries of chasing after bird dogs. And he is right. Absolutely right. Speaking of bird dogs, one other thing I'm grateful for, it's been, uh, you know, I own a type A German wire-haired pointer who cannot stand still. Maybe that's why we get along so well. He's type A. I'm type A+. Plus. Uh, I've I, I've never been diagnosed ADHD, but I'll bet if I was young again, that's what they'd call me. Flick kept his weight on this season, so far at least, which is a very rare occurrence. Usually after, a, you know, we pile into the truck and head for some place to hunt, he refuses to eat. I use every trick in the book. And, and on this last trip to Kansas... I used a whole bunch of tricks from pouring hot uh, chicken broth on that kibble that he eats to um, burying all sorts of wonderful culinary surprises in his kibble. We stayed in a lot of hotels with free breakfasts. And even if they were powdered eggs to begin with, once they were under his regular dog food, Flick didn't mind one bit. They're now his favorite kibble enhancer and he is maintaining his weight this time of year thanks a lot flick for all your hard work and thank you all of those free breakfast providers we're rolling right along on the upland nation's special thanksgiving day edition what are you thankful for these days just pause for a moment before you take that second helping of mashed potatoes and think about it maybe you went around the table before you started well at our house we started early you got to make sure the quality is high on all that stuff that you're cooking but anyway what are you grateful for even if you're not on the podcast today you can still take a moment and reflect on that and become a little bit more grateful Hey, look at that. Next up in line is um, a good friend and a fellow um, ugly dog owner. Frank, welcome to the program. How are you tonight? 
Not too bad. How are you, Doc? I can't complain one bit. I um, hope you're having a great Thanksgiving season. I'm not going to go as far as to say the C word yet. <laughs> That'll wait until next Tuesday or thereabouts. But uh, we're talking about being thankful, being grateful. Tell me a little bit about how you are celebrating your gratitude these days. Well, I got the luxury this summer, and it's how I met you and Ben and James this summer, was that you threw out there to help help a handful of us train train our dogs, and this is my first year with a with a bird dog, and I bought a I bought a Griffin and got in with you guys, and it's helped me tremendously, and I can't even explain how thankful I am. Well, you're very. You're very kind, Frank, and I appreciate that. And it, it is a it's a group project. We're all learning together, but I'm glad you could join us. And it sounds like Waylon is making a lot of progress. How how's your hunting season going right now? I it's we've had our ups and downs and he's had more ups and downs. He's he hasn't missed pointing at birds yet. We have a few things to work on this spring on his retrieve. But his nose is working great. His pattern working great. He's holding just fine. So I can't complain very much at all. He seems to be right where he's supposed to be. You know, I'm what I'm grateful for is keeping our lines of communication open. So when you do have questions, maybe one of us can be a, kind of a backstop, a reality check for you. And and I love being able to help you with that. So uh, um, what you had to, uh, yeah, you know, you I, I know you do a lot of things in the outdoors. Um, if you had to pick one or two more besides your dog Waylon, what else are you grateful for out there? Uh, to be able to spend another year hunting and fishing with my father, he's getting a little older and his health isn't all that great. Probably not going to be able to do it a whole lot longer. So it's been a good year for that. You're working at that. What are you, what are you doing to, to, to make sure that happens? Well, this weekend we're actually headed down to, uh, to where he lives, and uh, my son has an elk tag down there. So we're going to have all three generations together doing a little elk hunt. You know, I, I've never had that opportunity, and I'm intensely jealous. I wish you the best on that one. I I know you're going to have a great time, and I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Good for you. How are you going to celebrate Thanksgiving Day? A uh, bunch of family coming over to the house and some friends that, with the weather, they've decided to stay into town, and we invited them over to our house, and we're going to barbecue a turkey and just have a bunch of friends and family sit around and sit chat and have a great day. And tell a hunting story or two for me. Oh, we will, I'm sure. All right, man. Well, listen, give Waylon a hug for me. My best to everybody around the table. And uh, be safe on that great elk hunt you're going to go on with three generations. Thanks for being on the Upland Nation podcast, Frank. All right. Thank you very much, Scott. Happy Thanksgiving. You're looking for one more reason to express your gratitude, and, and you do have to express it somehow. You could do it internally, but it doesn't matter. As long as you do it, that's the key to it, of course. It improves self-esteem, at least according to the Journal of Applied Sports Psychology, and in a lot of ways, that's what we are, our athletes. Our dogs are certainly elite athletes. Some of us limp along behind them, and we're not quite at the same level, but it does work. Studies have shown that gratitude reduces social comparison. So again, if you're jealous of that guy because he's climbing the chucker hills faster than you, eh, just be grateful you can climb them at all and you will feel better. Also, becoming resentful toward people who have more money or better jobs, who are better shooters. Yeah, I know. I'm looking at myself in the mirror when I say that. Those are major factors that can be reduced with self-esteem and gratitude. You'll appreciate other people's accomplishments as much as you appreciate your own. We got lots more phone calls coming up. So uh, if you're in the line, hang on. If you're not in the line, stand by and listen carefully because we've got lots more to talk about in this special Upland Nation Thanksgiving edition. Yeah, we got one or two quick announcements, and then we'll be back to our Handle It segment, talking all about some of the things I learned working with flushing breeds in Kansas. So don't go away. 
ESPamerica.com is where you learn more about hearing protection. And I don't mean just their brand, which is a pretty darn good brand. I use it all the time in the field and on the range. But one of the interesting things at ESPamerica.com is uh, kind of the one of the first pages in their website. I'll call it transparency. ESP is the only hearing protection outfit that I know of that puts all of their various products with their prices right there and then tells you, here's what these do best. If you want more of that, go to this product. If you don't mind so much of this, go to that product. You can make an informed decision on all the important aspects of hearing protection simply by looking at that page. It starts at ESPamerica.com. Tell them I sent you. Handle It covers all things dogs and dog-related, training, care, feeding, you name it. We're going to cover it here. And right now, a lesson learned in Kansas working with other people's dogs And in this case, flushing breeds. We had some Labradors with us, some Springer Spaniels, a little bit of everything, even a Chesapeake Bay Retriever and a young Chesapeake Bay Retriever on top of that. So you can imagine for a pointer guy, I was a little bit out of my element, walking into the deep end without my swimmies on. Had a great time with everybody there. And uh, one of the things, one of our friends who was in effect guiding us there reminded me thanks josh is that you got to pay close attention on these flushing breeds we don't get all of the tells if you will in a flushing dog if we don't work with them regularly so here are the things i started keying in on and if you're somebody's guest or if if you're new to the whole world and you have a flushing breed of one sort or another Think about these things, which I'm practicing every chance I get these days. The tail tells a tale. If you can keep your eye on that dog, watch him when he's calm and disinterested, and then compare that to when that dog is getting birdie, a lot of times the tail speed will increase. Most of the Labrador owners I talk to uh, will tell me The tail will describe a circle, kind of a helicopter, if you will. Now with the spaniels, I found that it's just simply a buzzsaw of a vibration. Whatever it is, keep your eyes peeled. The other one that's pretty obvious if you're just paying attention is the size of their pattern. While they'll quarter back and forth quite often in a windshield wiper pattern, as they get into that scent cone and they start getting real excited and about ready to go, that pattern squeezes down and kind of reflects the size of the scent cone, if you will. Tightens up a little bit. So next time you're hunting with your best buddy whose big Labrador is just a mystery to you, remember those two things and be safe because those birds are going to get up without warning quite often. See you in the field. Okay, first uh, from my good friends on Facebook, and I and I mean that. I know a lot of people will um, will uh, will not. But uh, Paul Hageman, thank you all that you do for our sport and passion for our dogs. You're welcome, Paul. Glad to do it. If that's your Thanksgiving message, I sure appreciate it. And I want to thank all of you for supporting us on Facebook, both at Upland Nation and at Wing Shooting USA. I'm also thankful for a spouse who married a fly fisher and will never let me forget that when I go bird hunting. And then once or twice, she's let me have two wire hairs in the house at the same time. So thanks, honey. Sure appreciate that. And for all the scout masters, the baseball coaches, music teachers, and all those other folks who taught me about hard work, persistence, and self-reliance, independent thinking, and stick-to-itiveness, my hat is off to you. For every person who took me hunting, shared a tip or a spot, lent me ammo and shared a bottle, I hope I've returned the favor in one way or another. All right, so joining me on the line, Josh Robinson. Where are you calling from? And by the way, Josh, I I don't want to be so presumptive, but I think I know that area code. 
I'm calling from Grand Prairie, Alberta. Coldest I've ever been has been up in that country when I was at the Canadian Finals Rodeo in Edmonton many years ago. Are you guys getting a winner yet? Yeah, we got about a foot of snow on the ground. It's minus 10. Oh, boy. Is that Celsius or Fahrenheit? That Celsius. Ooh. All right. Well, I hope you are bundled up, and I hope you're thankful for uh what would i call it central heating and uh and maybe a heat pump out there although at that temperature the heat pump probably not going to help you much is it no no but i'm in a truck with a heated seat right now so that works pretty good (laughs) i love it well up there you folks uh celebrate thanksgiving a little bit earlier than we do so you've had a little bit of practice and all of that but being grateful is not a once a year kind of a thing josh if you're a bird hunter what are you grateful for these days well, just having the uh, the dog power to go chase birds around as much as I possibly can. Yeah, I love it. What kind of dogs are you running these days? I run German short hairs. How are they doing up there in the prairies? Are you finding a lot of sharp tails these days? Actually, the sharp tail numbers aren't as good as the Hungarian partridge this year. We just happened to stumble across uh, really good numbers of huns this year, so... That uh, that worked out good for the dogs. Yeah, I bet it did. I am uh, I am uh, in the same kind of uh, situation. I I am amazed at the places I'm finding huns these days. And I don't know if it's just a something in the air or what. Maybe the spinning of the earth. But there are more Hungarian partridge in my chucker country than I've seen in twenty years. What else are you grateful for in your hunting world? Well, just being able to take new people out hunting and uh, making new friends all the time. I try and get as many people out as possible when I'm out bird hunting. Love it. Do you ever get any pushback from some of the hardcore, the you know, the old timers, or maybe some of the new timers who think that you're crazy to be sharing your spots? Uh, we do. A lot of the guys up here get a little fussy about that, but I don't know. I just if I'm going to take somebody out that's new, I'm going to want to show them a good time so they get hooked. Yeah, I love that idea. It is so true. Uh, you know, we've talked offline and, and in other situations over the over the past few months in my world with that whole idea. You know, if people don't see some element of success early on, they're just not going to become a hunter. Have you seen that? And Do you have any great stories about that? Well, actually, it was just two weeks ago I went to pick up a dog in Saskatchewan, my male, and a fella, I had trained his short hair. I asked him to come along, and we stopped to chase some birds around on the way home. And uh, we got into some of the best numbers I've ever seen in my life, but I never told him that. So (laughs) he's, uh, he's pretty excited to do that again. Oh, I'll bet. I'll bet. Well, I'm glad to hear. How do you feel about that sort of thing? It sounds like it's right in your wheelhouse. Well, it's just, it, it gave a guy um, a good opportunity to see what bird hunting can be, not what it is all the time. Yeah, good point. And, and you know, I guess it's up to us if we're going to be teachers in one way or another to, to remind people. I I was in South Dakota with a 16-year-old who'd never hunted pheasants before, and we were at a preserve because that's what we do with our, our beginners when we can. Um, and the first flush was a covey flush of ringnecks, and I turned around and told him immediately not to expect that kind of success every time he goes out. Sounds like the Hungarian partridge situation is a lot like that. Yeah, it was. This is the first year I've run into that. Now, on a on a side note, um, he had a young dog, and there was an Irish setter I had trained, or an English setter, sorry, I had trained that was down there. And uh, at one point, we come up a hill, and all three dogs had uh, were kind of in a triangle and holding. Now, my male was the only one that was experienced; the other two were young dogs. And uh, I just told him, I said, let's sit back and let this play out and see what happens. And sure enough, not one of them moved. And we went up and put up a covey of sharp tail, about five birds. And uh, I told him, I said, that was the dangest thing i ever seen. Those two young dogs should have been all over those birds. But uh, I I guess they just backed the older dog and and did their thing. It was neat neat to see. We had uh, a lot of good experiences on that trip. 
you know, I'm getting a lot of those kind of pleasant surprises and I'm ever grateful for, for them. And I wish Flick was listening right now. You know, all those things you do all spring and summer to hopefully get your dog to the next level. Then you go hunting and, uh, and they forget a lot of them, but they also remember a lot of them. And I'm seeing that, uh, this, this year, maybe he's just getting a little smarter in his, uh, now that he's over two years old and maybe I'm becoming a slightly better handler as well. Well, um, I know that, uh, you're a few weeks past your Canadian Thanksgiving day. What did you do to celebrate up there? Uh, we went out for a really nice bird hunt. That's typically what I do every year. My birthday falls on our Thanksgiving. So the whole crew of us get together and go out for a goose duck and then a, a grouse hunt. Okay, you can't go without telling me how you did. Well, it wasn't wasn't one of the best hunts we've been on, but we had a lot of fun. Uh, the the geese were just bugging out of town and didn't play nice, but we had some ducks come in, and then we went on a rough grouse hunt, and uh, I think we got into about twenty birds that day. So that sounds like a pretty that good was, grouse uh, hunt. Well, we kind of we kind of got a. Uh, advantage up here the the grain fields weren't harvested so anywhere there's still standing grain the birds kind of like to come out of the bush and get into that so they'll come right out of the 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 uh, i guess i'll call it i'll call it the forest you called it the bush right next to crop fields that's uh, something a lot of folks never experience with roughies they uh oats are their downfall they can't they can't stay out of oats. So if you can find a field that still has oats on it up here, you're uh, you're going to get into a good number of birds. Well, then you're thankful for a late harvest as well as everything else, Josh. Congratulations. Uh, thanks for being part of the Upland Nation podcast on what I think is going to be a fantastic annual tradition around here. Appreciate it. Stay warm and uh, tell your friends to listen. I'd appreciate that myself. Well, thanks a lot for having me. Come on, Scott. That's, this has been fun. You're welcome. And I know, I know, I talk a lot about Flick, but I'm also uh, very grateful. This kid has the best upbringing, uh, the best genetics I've ever had in a German wire-haired pointer, and he's got a great attitude, too. This will probably help you. I am so thankful that Flick's feet are healthy. As you know, I'm quite a bit of a chucker hunter when i'm not on tv that's probably where you'll find me and the soil and the rocks out there we hunt on volcanoes that's where we hunt our chuckers on volcanoes and uh and and the abrasive basalt lava rock country out there will really rip up a dog's pads you know for years and years i thought well the way to fix that was to toughen up to harden the dog's pads well only in the last few months have i come to the conclusion that you know you read the back of the the bottle on enough of these pad heel products and that's the one i like most is pad heel and you realize that soft flexible pads not soft per se but flexible and uh yeah i'll call it soft flexible pads handle the rocks in that rough country a little better than hard horny you know uh, pads and and we have the same problem as everybody else sometimes they're dried out sometimes they're just that way naturally but if you can do something to your dog's pads like that might be worth taking a look at ask your veterinarian but i found by putting on this pad heel or you know it could be something else like that for you um it might make those pads a little bit more flexible and minimize the cracks and the peeling that comes from dry, hard, horny pads. I'm thankful for pad heel. So I'm thankful for Tony Hill's call as well. Tony, whereabouts are you these days? I'm in Lexington, North Carolina. Anywhere near Snow Hill, one of my favorite places. Not very far away. Well, good, and and I know I know you're one of the things you're probably grateful for is um, the the flooding situation has really minimized itself in the last year or so. I know you guys faced some really rough stuff a while back. Yes, sir, we sure did. There was a lot of the state that was really underwater. Yeah, what a mess. Well, glad to hear that. But uh, as you know, we're here to talk about thankfulness and gratitude when it comes to bird hunting and bird dogs. Uh, what have you got to be thankful for on this Thanksgiving day? Well, Scott, I am so thankful that I had a dad and still have him, thankfully, 
that was willing to take me hunting. He uh, started me off bird hunting at about eight years of age. Uh, finally, at about 10 or 12, he bought me my first real shotgun, a 16 gauge, and he instilled in me a love for dogs and upland hunting, and we did rough grouse hunting and quail hunting uh, in the mountains and uh, valleys of East Tennessee where I was born. And I um, think back every Thanksgiving at the many times I ate dinner at my grandmother's house in my briar pants and my hunting boots because it was a tradition. We went out every Thanksgiving morning and went bird hunting. And uh, I, I guess I need to be as, about as thankful for my mom who was willing to actually put up with us doing that every year. So, but it, it's been a really great adventure. I'm closing on 60 years of age now and I have uh, maintained bird dogs and enjoyed hunting my entire life. So he gave me a legacy that just has never stopped. I, I, I'm going to write this down after we're done here because that is a spectacular story. And, and I know there are others out there listening to the Upland Nation podcast that, that have similar stories about being given permission to, to go hunting on a holiday like Absolutely. this. Absolutely. I pulled it off one time and we ended up chasing somebody else's cows most of the time, but it was still a lot of fun just to share that time with somebody. Oh, I love it. Well, do you still have that 16 gauge? Uh, as a matter of fact, I do, and I have many, many more. Um, I actually run a group on Facebook called the 16 Gauge Tradition Society, along with a couple others. Got about 3,000 members now, and it is a very important part of my life. Uh, I've got a couple of gentlemen who helped me with it, uh, Abner Sermons and Mike Stahl, who are really good friends that uh, helped me run the thing, and we have a lot of fun with it. I've had the opportunity to meet a lot of good folks at some of the shooting events around the area, and uh, it's just uh, my my love for upland hunting I don't think will ever end uh, my body may wear out to where I can't go but my love for it will never end right on right on so tell me what kind of dogs you're running these days I have uh, four Britneys and one English setter so I'm dog poor at this point Ow, I'm just thinking about cleaning up after a hunt with those long haired <laughs> dogs you got any advice for us maybe we should be thankful for it Trim them before you go. Okay. That's the way to handle it. Trim them before you go. It makes it much easier. Uh, there you go, everybody. If you've got long-haired dogs, man, uh, good luck to you. Maybe you're thankful for them as much as I'm thankful for my wire hairs. And I got a, Absolutely. I got a nice smooth coat on Flick these days, but I don't need yeah. to don't need to worry about that. Well, good on you, and um, uh, enjoy your Thanksgiving holiday. We are enjoying it right here on the Upland Nation podcast. Tony, thanks a lot for being with us. Thanks for having me, Scott. And right now, I am thankful once again for yet another caller, Doug Conady. Welcome to the program, Doug. Thanks, Scott. Where are you calling from, by the way? I'm in a town called Harleysville in, in Pennsylvania. Okay. It's, uh, it's north of Philadelphia. Okay, so closer to Philly than Pittsburgh. Oh, definitely. Had a wonderful time many television series ago in uh, Nima Colon, that resort out there outside of Pittsburgh. That was you ever been out there? I, I have not, but I have heard of it. I uh, recently have started doing a lot of sporting clays, and, and they're they're well known for it. They are, and it's a heck of a heck of a course, or at least it was when we were back there making a TV show called Clay Target Shootout. That was a lot of fun. So, Doug, tell me on this Thanksgiving edition of the Upland Nation podcast, what are you thankful for? Uh, actually, I'm, I'm thankful, um, you know, for all my kids. And uh, I all my kids did some fishing with me. All my, well, my boy, both my boys went hunting with me. Um, they're now obviously off and, and doing their own thing, but uh, all those fond memories I can look back on, it's, it's really great. You know, better than pictures, better than anything else, I think it is those memories. They only get better over time, don't they? Oh, without a doubt. I mean, I can I can still picture Rob's first pheasant and Andrew, who's my youngest son, his first pheasant. Heck, I can still remember my first pheasant, right? No, oh, I can too. It took me forever to chase a dang thing down. <laughs> I I was really lucky. It was my first pheasant with my first dog. It was it was it was it was you know as if a Gene Hill had written it, you know. Oh, absolutely. That is a magazine story right there. Tell me, uh, 
what about your your kids? Have any of them followed in your footsteps? Do any of them still hunt or anything? Um, my my well, my my oldest now has four grand. Well, I have four grandchildren with him. He has four children, so now he doesn't do a whole lot anymore. Um, my my youngest, um, he and I, we still get a, a couple bird hunts in a year, um, and. Both the uh, and both boys and I do a little bit of, of sporting clays together when we get a chance. And uh, they move away, but uh, I, I get to see them as much as I can and uh, get to have fun. What kind of dogs you're running these days? Um, actually, um, when my I've always had Springer Spaniels, and after my last one passed away, my wife and I we talked about it. Um, my oldest lives in upstate Pennsylvania. My youngest lives in Connecticut. Um, it, we sort of decided maybe we're going to pass on having another dog in the family so we can just pick up and go and visit kids and grandkids as we want to. I understand completely. It is a lifestyle. It's a commitment, that's for sure. But you have all those memories to remember long into the future. You know, um, when you're sitting around the table this Thanksgiving, I'm presuming that's what you'll be doing. Uh, I can't wait, <laughs> but, but when you are, um, uh, you going to think of anything in particular, uh, hunting related that you'll want to share with everybody. We do that, you know, um, I'll be honest. We're going to my, uh, my, uh, wife's uh, sister's family and, and they do a little bit of fishing, but they're not really too much in the outdoors. And I, I'll sort of keep that stuff to myself. And maybe your wife will be grateful when you keep that stuff to yourself. Uh, yeah, sometimes sometimes it is. Yeah, I, I tell people to be loud and proud about that stuff, but at some point, marital discord is not on the agenda, and that's uh, probably politic on your part, Doug. Well, actually, my wife's always been really great about it because every, you know, you know, the season's ran, dove season. You know, dove season started in September, which ran into pheasants, which ran into the second season, and then you waited for trout season. So she's always been really great about it. But, uh, you know, around some family members, I, I keep it a little more low-key. Well, she's she's thankful for that, that's for sure. Well, yeah, good. I think she is. Doug, enjoy your Thanksgiving. Uh, you've got a lot to be grateful for, and we all do as well, including your phone call. Thanks for being on the Upland Nation podcast, Doug. Okay. Thanks for talking to me, Scott. You have a great Thanksgiving. And you too. All right. We've got one more quick message before our This Land is Your Land public access feature. And that message is from my good friends at dogtra.com. Once again, wow, it's the time of year, I guess. There's a sale going on during the month of November only at dogtra.com. 30 to 60 bucks off a bunch of this stuff, including that Pathfinder. That's the GPS uh, collar combo that they put together that works with your cell phone. You don't need a cell phone signal. You just need your cell phone, and then it's radio back and forth. 30 to 60 bucks off, and I'll bet if you beg and plead, you can apply the Upland Nation discount as well. S-L-U-N-10 We'll get you 10% off of whatever you're paying for. And remember, free shipping on anything over 200 bucks. It's all at dogtra.com. One of my favorite places I go there at the beginning and the end of every season because it's only about two and a half hours away. So if you're anywhere near the Summer Lake Wildlife Refuge, I don't care if you own camo or you shoot, uh, you know, a camo gun. It doesn't matter. The Summer Lake Wildlife Refuge is administered by the state and my good friend Marty St. Louis while it's legendary for its waterfowl hunting, sometimes the snow geese will dark in the sky. I know that's funny because they're white, but you know what I mean. But there are upland opportunities as well. And one of the bonuses is if you're walking around out there, of course, you're using non-toxic shot. So if it flies, well, at least it's in danger when I'm around. Maybe when it flies, it dies with you. But you can jump shoot the river. You can put a sneak on some of the ponds and the swampy areas. And you never know what might fly. There's valley quail and there's ringneck pheasants, there's old homesteads, there's prairies, CRP, there's mowed crops, 
and all that water. It's all at the Summer Lake Wildlife Refuge. It's about two and a half hours southeast of Bend. And when you get back from visiting Summer Lake Wildlife Refuge, go to tagsafari.com. Right now, they're premiering an entire line of clothing for kids. So the next time you're headed out, if you want the kids to look as good as you do and express their sporting image, if you will, go to tagsafari.com. It's gift-giving season. Why not get the kids some good-looking, outdoorsy stuff for their holiday parties and, and for the rest of their year as well? And remember, there's a hunting vest on sale for 19 bucks. Very limited quantities, limited sizes, but take a look at all of the stuff at tagsafari.com and take 15% off everything with the code TAGLINDEN15. That code again, tag Linden 15 Quick reminder, don't forget the sale at dogtra.com. All sorts of stuff on sale there, 30 to 60 bucks off. And then there is that additional 10% savings with the code SLUN10. And that tells me that it's time to start button up the barn here and heading out to train flick some more yeah it never ends but you know how that goes sure appreciate your spending some time with us at the upland nation podcast the rest of the week we're at the upland nation facebook page spend a lot of time at the wing shooting usa facebook page as well you can always drop me a note there or you can send me an email at scott linden outdoors at gmail.com Thank you to everybody who called in, everybody who made comments at the Facebook pages and at the blog. That blog, by the way, is scottlindenoutdoors.com. I'll talk with you any way I can. So uh, love to talk bird dogs, birds, hunting places. You got a question, I'll make up an answer if I don't have a better one. Just love doing it for you. Hope it shows. Hope you're doing the same for somebody else. Pay it forward, everybody. Be safe out there. Thanks again for listening. I'll see you in the field. <laughs>